What's going on, guys? I am here with Marek, and he is going to share his X plant based story with us. So, uh, Mark, if you can, just let us know how you got into veganism and just go over, you know, what type of diets you've tried over the past, well, six years now, right? Mm, yeah. Um, so basically around 2012, uh, just before like 2011, I was, um, had, had some health issues. Um, I had like constipation, back pain, little stuff like this, which, uh, make me interested more about health. And, uh, I was started to research on YouTube and I've stumbled on, um, documentary called food Inc, which was about, um, food industry, how they raise chickens and all the, those other animals, how they are pumped with hormones, antibiotics and all this. And it made me realize, like, I don't think I want to eat this. And after that, I saw some people, uh, some testimonials of people who cured themselves from some sort of um, diseases like IBS and and all those different stuff with uh, raw veganism. And it all made kind of sense for me that you should supposed to eat raw foods um, and no meat. Um, so then from, from that, I was just, like, quite sure that this is the way. So I start straight into raw veganism in 2000 and early early le sorry late 2011 start raw veganism i was doing all those cleanses all that stuff fasting and just pure raw foods lost a lot of weight everyone was concerned in my family and i thought i know what i was doing um then 2012 i've decided i'm gonna move from my country which is poland to uk and when i uh, when i moved I went back to eat cooked foods, but it was all plant-based. And for some reason, I've added eggs. So I was eating plant-based food with eggs. Pretty much, I was a vegetarian um, for three years, from 2012 to 2015. Then I've decided I'm going to cut the eggs. I was quite sure that's 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 fine thing to do. So I've cut the eggs, and then for three years, I was on a plant-based diet, and uh, I was having crazy sugar cravings um, so I would have in the evening I would have some um, some cookies chocolate bars and stuff like this um, and those most of the time were not vegan if I could get some that were vegan I would have them but if not sometimes I would have um, a cookie that had milk in it but I would never buy myself meat fish milk um, eggs or anything um, animal from an animal um, so from those three years, I was uh, pretty much hungry almost all the time. So if I would have in the morning, I would have like a huge smoothie or a big fruit salad, which will uh, keep me going for like two hours. And then I feel like I need something else. Um, I would have a vegan protein bar. And then later on, I would have beans with rice, beans with rice or chickpeas. Um, and from all those foods, I would have... Uh, digestive issues bloating burping and stomach was hurting and stuff um so from that because of those digestive issues i thought it's not it's not the diet but something wrong with me so i was buying digestive enzymes and then i was thinking maybe i should tweak the diet maybe i should go more into raw veganism again so i was eating more fruits and still some cooked foods i think i was actually doing kind of raw to four um, and because of that I was eating a lot of fruits I was losing weight again um, and obviously I, I, I was always skinny I was not happy with losing weight um, so I was losing weight again um, and um, yeah I, I was I was not sure what to do I was not sure what to do and obviously I was watching all those vegan youtubers and they kind of kept me going they kind of and uh, kept me like into belief that this is still good for me. I wasn't supplementing anything. Well, I was. I wasn't supplementing B12, not vitamin D. What I would do is get at um, like a wheat grass, wheat grass supplement, and I would add it to smoothies. So when I was reading the uh, the supplement content, it was saying that it has vitamin A, it has uh, iron, it has this and that. So I was like, okay, that's not true, you know. Because um, my first reason into plant-based diet is health. I was thinking it's really good for me. So um, I think that's it. that's why I got out of it. Because if I, if I was doing it for the animals, I would probably be still in it, you know. 
Um, so yeah, so um, I had crazy, I was tired, sugar cravings, bloating, had a brain fog, which I never experienced before, and then had teeth cavities, I actually lost a tooth, and the worst thing happened to me was uh, epileptic fits, and I had like four of them throughout, uh, say, two, three years. And uh, last one was like 2017 in December, so it's more than a year now that I haven't had one. And I'm, uh, I think I'm almost like eight years, eight months eating an uh, omnivore diet, pretty much. So, uh, wow, that was nice yeah. and quick. Oh my God, I am so <laughs> excited and happy about that. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is how you tell a story without <laughs> going off on tangents for an hour. So, what I wanted to kind of emphasize here was, you know, we're not focused here on discrediting what vegans think as a perfect vegan diet, because if a vegan diet was so good for you, he's following it 90, 95 percent of what most people would view as an ideal vegan diet. Uh, just to give some context of the summary of what he did, he went raw vegan in 2012 for a couple months, lost a lot of weight. Uh, so then he went back to eating plant based, but he still consumed eggs. Uh, and then he decided to cut out the eggs. Was there like a thinking behind cutting out the eggs? Was it like that? Oh, this animal food is the reason. Uh, was there something negative in your diet that was happening? Um, no, no. The thing is, I was like, I wanted to be vegan. Um, but those eggs were holding me back for some reason. I don't know why. And then someone just told me, like, if you want to be in proper vegan, just stop eating it. You know, I was like. Yeah, maybe you're right. Then just stop eating. It. So you wanted to. Obviously, there's something about people wanting to like associate with veganism a sense of community i'm sure that had something to do with it yeah you know it's it, it feels it's like it feels nice because you really care is. about animals you know and the environment and then yeah i was thinking is the best diet for your health as well so it's like i should cut all those animal products out you know mm -hmm. and if we actually look at what you were eating this is and this is really cookie cutter and what i mean by cookie cutter if you guys aren't familiar with the term is it's very generic or commonly replicated in the vegan community a lot of vegans will wake up with a fruit salad or a shake uh, then they'll have a snack they always have snacks after every single meal which is preposterous to me uh, so you know he wakes up he has his fruit salad or shake uh, he has a vegan protein bar as a snack then for lunch he has beans and rice then he gets hungry again, has another snack. He cheats on uh, the cocoa bars, the cookies. Mm -hmm. And then for dinner, if he didn't have that, he would have like falafel, tofu, high calorie. So what we're seeing here is two, two things primarily. We're seeing a fluctuation in blood sugar and sugar cravings. Uh, that's just inherent to the vegan diet. And the second thing we're seeing is craving of actual caloric nutrition. Now, whether this is a lack of fat in the diet could be, whether this is a lack of nutrients in the diet, it could be that as well. But the reason vegans are constantly eating is because their body isn't really extracting nutrition from the food they're consuming. And you guys might say, oh, you know, uh, he wasn't plant-based because he was eating chocolate and cookies, but the refined sugar and the refined flour in those chocolate and cookies compared to those whole plant-based foods is actually a usable source of like calories to actually keep him going and sustain himself from an energy perspective. Uh, th this kind of ties into the inability to assimilate enough nutrients from just like, if you ever notice anyone following a whole foods plant-based diet, a lot of them tend to look like they're anorexics. Uh, and, and not only that, just the high anti-nutrient content of these foods, uh, the disruption in the gut lining, all of these things, and, and just the sheer size of the bowel movements, it's very clear that, you know, we're not absorbing nutrients from these foods. Yeah, I actually didn't know anything about anti-nutrients back then, you know, and I didn't know They're anyone. Myth. Myth. Yeah, and I didn't know anyone who would say, oh, yeah, I've eaten more meat and I cured myself some, some sort of health condition, which I know now people are curing themselves with the carnivore diet, which is crazy to me. Well, it was crazy to me. Did you ever hear about keto? Yeah, yeah. I, th I thought that's not good for you because of all that fat, all that bacon, you know. That's... Conventional wisdom, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's tough. Uh, it's, hard to, it, it's hard to overcome that. Uh, what made you actually overcome that idea that meat is okay? So basically, throughout all those years, obviously, people were asking, like, why are you doing this, blah, blah, blah. So I was never this type of vegan plant-based person that would say oh you have to do this blah 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 you know at the beginning i kind of was because i thought it was really healthy um so i was telling my family and they all think i thought i'm crazy 
uh, but whoever I met, I wasn't telling them. If they ask me, I would tell them, oh, yeah, this is, um, I think this is the best uh, way to eat. This is the healthiest way, blah, blah, blah. And then I made some people go at least vegetarian. Some people went vegan and they all went back and they all said, oh, I had some issues, blah, blah, blah. And I was thinking, oh, that's, that's not possible. It's not because of the diet. You're just, you know, you don't want to do this. And then um, seeing some people um, losing hair and having all those different issues. And then um, obviously my issues as well. And I started to like doubt the diet. And I was where did you see these issues? Like in your friends online in the community? Yeah. Uh, mainly friends and I heard some stories on YouTube as well that someone went vegan they lo- they had cavities lose their hair blah 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 but in in, in my friends as well it's I detox think, yeah they it's say detox, it's guys. detox detox it's, guys half your teeth fall out you, you're starving to death they it's say they say it's detox I think I actually because I was watching vegan gains and I think I saw uh, the debate with uh, Sferich and I've looked into his channel and I was like, oh my God, he's crazy. He's mental, you know. And I never saw before him anyone who was eating like raw meat. And I was starting to go through his channel, listen to him. Then I was, I found out some video of a guy who was like more uh, science based. And he was saying that maybe vegetables are really not that necessary for us. And he I was saying, who that was? Uh, Christopher Walker. Okay, okay. Christopher Walker. Walker. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he, he done a video and he was saying like, he will actually mentioned anti-nutrients. I think that was the first time I actually heard about anti-nutrients in the plants. And he was saying like, like, how is it that kids really hate vegetables and don't want to eat it? And he was also saying that there are better, that there are better plant foods to consume rather than like kale. He was saying like tubers, like sweet potatoes, normal potatoes and fruits are a lot better source of nutrition than like kale, broccoli or any uh, type of vegetable like that. And he kind of, oh, and also he had a lot of videos about testosterone and I saw um, how many plant foods are detrimental for our testosterone levels. And it made me like actually question it even more. Um, then I saw Sean Baker, and they made me like all those people made me actually think, and also the ex vegan videos. Um, I could relate to them, and that's why I wanted to do it as well because you know, people can, can relate to this and they can stop the misery for themselves. Yeah, I think one thing important to touch on there is the anti nutrients. And if we actually look at anthropological evidence of indigenous groups that consumed even omnivorous diets with high grain consumption if they didn't prepare the grains properly they would essentially lose their teeth their teeth and have skeletal problems due to lack of minerals in the in the bones uh so for those of you that don't know anti-nutrients the primary ones we're concerned about are phytic acid uh phytic acid is very very high in grains in seeds uh, in certain legumes as well and the way you reduce phytic acid is by soaking or fermenting so what they what vegans should really be doing with foods like oats and uh, various grains is making things like sourdough breads, fermenting them for several days in an acidic medium. What that does is it reduces the phytic acid content. But this phytic acid, these phytates, they bind to minerals in the body and essentially they make it so your body can't absorb them in the digestive tract. This is where you know the paper versus the actual available value of plant foods in the stomach c- turns into question. Because you might say, on paper, you're getting your minerals, all of these things that yeah. should be remineralizing your teeth. But reality is, your body's not absorbing them. Not only because of the anti-nutrient content of these grains, but because you're not consuming vitamins that are needed to absorb them that are only contained in animal foods. So, uh, it's interesting. Like We could try to make arguments that, oh, this is why you got cavities, blah, blah, blah. But even our indigenous ancestors would get cavities when they didn't have access to foods like sweets and fruits. Uh, you know, the epileptic fits was something we, we gloss over a little bit, and that can be caused by B12 deficiency, but at the end of that documentary you watched, and at the end of those <sighs> vegan videos you watched on YouTube, they didn't say, oh, make sure to take your B12, or you're going to develop neurological problems. They don't, they don't say that. They, they just try to sugarcoat everything, and literally sugarcoat everything. Yeah, exactly, and I was, um, I was listening to some people, and they were saying, oh, B12 is actually made by by bacteria and we're supposed to eat like dirt you know like the, it's in the dirt uh, bro yeah exactly uh, so what i'm gonna do you know and um i thought i'm not gonna have any problems because a, a lot of vegans they're saying oh yeah i'm not supplementing i'm fine you know i've been on this diet for oh, so many so years you've heard, you've heard vegans say 
There's I'm not a, supplementing yeah. B12 and I'm fine. Some of them, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, yeah. You know, and, some people would say I'm fine before they went on a motorcycle at 100 miles per hour too, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't believe in supplements. I'm not sure how, uh, to this day, I'm not actually sure how the vitamins from the supplements are being absorbed. Are they are they the same as from the foods or is it actually not working for us that well? I'm, I'm not actually quite sure. But so you were I'm, trying the wheatgrass, right? Yeah, like the wheatgrass and all those powders that are like made from There's foods, dirt in them, bro. Like, Maca, maca fruit, maca, maca powder, right? Wheatgrass. Acai. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and all this type of superfoods that were like dried, but still in a kind of food. So I thought that's more Legit, absorbable. Let's, let's start a supplement company. Let's take some dirt, but make sure to grind up a lot of ants and worms in it. And it's actually going to work for the vegans. And they're like, oh my God, this is the best B12 supplement ever. I, I, and I'm not joking. I'm sure if someone did this right now, it would work. I'm dead serious. I think it would work. But that's the funny great. thing is, these vegans say that the claim that there should be dirt on vegetables and fruits and that there's B12 in that bacteria, that is complete dog shit. That is the biggest vegan myth there is. And I actually, if you guys haven't seen one of my vegan parody videos, I took some dirt from my backyard and I put it in a, a blender with some dates and I drank it. And it was actually, it actually tasted pretty good because it's pure sugar and it's sugar and water. It's going to taste fine. So if you vegans want to actually try to see if there's B12 in dirt, you could do it. There's nothing wrong with eating dirt in your backyard, but you're not going to get B12 from it because that's a myth. I hate to break it to you. Yeah, it's crazy. The epileptic fits, though, wasn't that like a glaring issue? You know, like you didn't really, you, you're just like, how, you have an epileptic fit and you're like, oh, whatever. It's, I'm gonna go to the, like, did you go to the doctor? Like, No, no, no. I was into hospital. I was in hospital. And uh, I had scans, I had MRI, I had EEG, I had all those different scans to find out, you know, what's the cause. And they say everything is fine in your brain, you know, we cannot find anything, you know. And yeah, they, they were saying fine. They gave me uh, some some pills, but I was like, I don't want to take them. So I, I didn't really take them. What were the pills, you know? What were the pills? Um, well, they're anti-epileptic pills. I'm, I'm oh, pushed. so they gave you medication that's treating symptoms, I see. Yeah, 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 exactly. But I didn't want to take it. Um, I don't know, I'm fine for now. I, I really think it was like really like high sugar and really low fat because obviously your brain needs fats, right? Like, oh, um, And I didn't get pretty much any fat um, unless from those processed foods, you know? But that's not good for you anyway. So I hope that's going to be gone now. Because I'm getting more fish, eating more fish, more, um, I mean, everything now, pretty much, you know, but, mm -hmm. but, but the vegetables. Mm -hmm. So I guess we didn't really touch though. I mean, you're doing much better now. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll gain that, I mean, you I'll, noticed, you know, like you noticed you gained your weight back. What's, what did you kind of notice after eating animal foods again? Um, it was, it was hard to start eating it again, you know, but the main, the, 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 the toughest part was the, the thing in your head you know, to change your belief again. Um, and then when I started to eat, I was fine. I was like, it's, it's good. And it was filling me up. Like, I think the first meal I had, I couldn't finish. It was filling me up. The first time uh, you weren't hungry in a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's true, though. Um, so it filled me up. I've gained like 10 kilograms. That's over a couple months. Um, and... What I felt is like I can sustain myself for longer. So whenever I'm gonna eat a meal, I can do whatever. I can train. I can, I can just function basically for longer without being hungry or tired. You know. Um, what else? One thing that's so hard to overcome, and something that I haven't really heard anyone else talking about, is the conventional wisdom. The combination of the conventional wisdom and the propaganda behind a vegan diet. There's nothing else that comes close to that. So what I mean by that is we have all these preconceived notions about diet, that meat is bad, fruits and vegetables are good, grains are healthy. Those things are very hard to overcome. Then you get attacked with this vegan propaganda saying, oh, this, this is that, this does this, the our environment, the animals, all this. And it makes sense because of what you've been told your whole life. But to actually eat animal products again and go against plant-based, there's nothing as strong in line with beliefs for me, it's never, it's always against, it's like counterculture in a way. Uh, to me, uh, I don't know if anyone thinks about this in a similar way. It's just, it's like trying to convince someone that, uh, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of people believe that.
tanning beds are bad for you, right? But if you actually look into the UV rays and tanning beds, uh, they're the same as the sun. So if you're saying tanning beds are bad for you, then you're saying the sun is bad for you. Uh, and then what, you're saying we shouldn't go to the beach anymore because you can get skin cancer? There's a lot of things in the modern lifestyle that we've been taught to do that aren't necessarily good for health. It's, it's really unfortunate. Uh, it's just so hard to overcome. And, and people will literally take it to the grave. They really, they really yeah, will. That's true. I, there was, I was looking at a video earlier. A vegan woman uh, had a stillbirth. Not a stillbirth, but uh, she conceived and like the baby didn't start growing or something. Uh, and she was vegan. And it took her months and months and months to get pregnant. And like these people won't. I mean, maybe it's your diet. It maybe if I mean, the, the problem is people think that diet doesn't matter. And the medical system has been always telling people that diet doesn't matter. And when you went to that hospital to get diagnosed with for the epilepsy, they didn't even they didn't ask you about your diet. They don't ask yeah. you about your lifestyle. I went to a if you go to like an infectious disease doctor or like a naturopath, they will actually ask those questions. Uh, so part part of this, it's really unfortunate. Uh, as much as I like to relate back to indigenous diets and native peoples, um, it's tough. All we can really do is. Uh, share these vegan experiences and show people how eerily similar they tend to be. Uh, so, Mark, did you want to kind of give like a message to people or like almost a warning uh, or anything on, on what your experiences have been? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say if if you are a vegan and you're watching this, I think that the sooner you stop being vegan, the better for you. Um, and probably most of the issues that you have is from uh, from the diet. Um, it's hard to change your belief system, but it's worth it. I think, I, I think it's really worth it. And you have to think also, there was no, I think there was no society that been like vegan and like they've been, you know, for years. Not even close. Yeah. Isn't it? Mm. So you, you might have problems with having kids if you want to have them. And if not, if you have kids, then they will have problems probably. Um, so that's, I, I don't, I don't think that's and, good. And whether it's a moral or a health or an ethical belief, what is, how is it going to hurt? Go to the store, buy some not, I mean, lacto-ovo vegans, the ones that eat shellfish, uh, like mussels and clams and oysters because they're not sentient. Uh, if, if your issue is from a moral perspective, it's arguable that consuming things like that, and even in the big picture, what is the harm in doing it for a day? If you're plant-based, if you're vegan for years and years and years, why not just try the animal foods and then, hey, if it doesn't work and you don't feel better, that's exactly. fine. Go back to veganism. What's the yeah. big deal? There are people like me that eat you know, more meat than most people eat in a lifetime in a couple of years. So the impact in general of you trying something for one day in the context of your overall health really is insignificant. And, um, and honestly, if you guys want to do something better for the environment, uh, you might as well go back out. You might, you might want to go outside and dig a hole and get in it. And uh, lay there for a couple months until you starve to death, because that's the only way you're truly going to have no impact on the environment. Um, yeah, I mean that's the most hip the most hypocritical thing to me is these vegans having kids, and then they talk about the environment, but they don't realize that one kid is like the equivalent of like 80 vegans or something from an environmental impact perspective. So it's, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, but anyway, Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to do this today. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, I don't think we have to do. We don't have to do a makeup check. I could wipe my face. <laughs> I could wipe my, I'm not wearing makeup today, guys. I'm sorry. No, no, I hate no. to break it to you guys. And uh, so anyway, thank you guys for joining us. Um, if you guys would like to support the channel, please subscribe and share the video. Uh, Marek, was there? Did you want to share any social media or anything? Uh, uh, if, if I'm not, I'm not doing any YouTube. But if someone wants to follow me um, on Instagram, maybe mm -hmm. it's. Um, mm, Mentally strong fitness with uh, underscores in between. So mentally, mentally strong, strong yeah. underscore fitness. Fitness, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And if you guys would like to check out anything from my Amazon shop, all that stuff is down in the comments below. I will put his Instagram in the description as well. But uh, thank you guys thank for watching you. and enjoy the rest of your week. All right. Let's Done. say bye to everyone. Say bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> bye. <laughs> I